evening, my name is Claire Battle and I'm Lawyers Committee for Better Housing's Board President. On behalf of LCBH's staff and board, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. I hope that you are safe and healthy during these unprecedented times. Since we closed our doors in March due to COVID-19, a lot has changed. We decided to move our 40th anniversary celebration, initially scheduled for this year, to fall 2021. Although I would have loved to celebrate our 40th birthday this year, the current circumstances do not allow us to do so. I look forward to celebrating with you next year at Buddy Guys Legends. The pandemic also forced LCBH to examine how we conduct business and demonstrated the creativity, innovative spirit of our staff, interns, and AmeriCorps Vista's team members. When we closed our doors, we faced a difficult problem. How do we continue to serve Chicago tenants in a world of social distancing? Rentervention, our online tool launched last year, allowed us to quickly pivot to a digital world. Rentervention's chatbot, Rennie, is programmed to answer questions and provide information based on an individual tenant's questions and situation. More importantly, Rentervention connects our attorneys to tenants through the virtual clinic. We also launched Tenant Thursdays, a Facebook Live video series. Here, LCBH attorneys and guest panelists have answered questions about Governor Pritzker's eviction moratorium, addressed the issue of illegal lockouts, informed tenants how to apply for emergency rental assistance programs, and discussed the need for a just cause ordinance that would obligate landlords to provide a legal reason for eviction. I want to take this moment to recognize the Lawyers Trust Fund of Illinois for their partnership in creating Rentervention and their various generous funding of LCBH's other legal services. Who would have known when we launched Rentervention just two years ago that its utility would be so important and timely today? There are many other funders who make our work possible. I want to also acknowledge the Wells Fargo National Housing Foundation and the Polk Brothers Foundation for their support of LCBH's COVID-19 Eviction Prevention Project. Their support made it possible for LCBH to enter into a partnership with the City of Chicago Department of Housing to provide free legal and supportive services to renters impacted by COVID-19. If you are a renter and you're concerned about being evicted due to a COVID-19 related loss of income, please call 312-347-7600 or visit rentervention.com for information about LCBH's services. LCBH can help you negotiate a repayment plan with your landlord, represent you in court, and determine whether you are eligible to receive emergency rental assistance funds. We're so happy that you have joined us this evening. Even though we're not meeting in person, we did not want to miss the opportunity to recognize the important contributions of LCBH's volunteers and to give out our annual awards. To get the evening started, I'm happy to introduce LCBH's Executive Director, Mark Schwartz. Thank you, Claire, for that warm welcome. Since LCBH's founding in 1980, we've had over 1,200 volunteers. If you were a volunteer for LCBH, as an attorney, social worker, paralegal, board member, please check in with us on the chat. Let us know what you did for LCBH and what years you were with us. Now to David Orr, a man who needs no introduction. David Orr is a leading voice in progressive politics in Chicago. But what many of you may not know is that David Orr was also a co-founder of LCBH back in 1980. I had the privilege to reconnect with David Orr as we were planning our 40th. David Orr always asks about our public policy work, and I value his advice. I can think of nobody better to present our outstanding pro bono service award winner. Take it away, David. Good evening. My name is David Orr. Tonight, I'm happy to present the LCBH's 2020 Outstanding Pro Bono Service Award. Uh, the award is given annually to an individual or institution who has provided outstanding volunteer services in support of LCBH's mission. Back in 1979, I was alderman of the 49th Ward. The biggest issue we faced at that time was housing. The condo movement was sweeping Rogers Park and Edgewater. Rent prices were rising and absentee landlords, at least some of them were neglecting to make necessary repairs to keep their buildings safe and habitable. 
In response, myself, Jack Kaplan, and a team of 10 wonderful volunteer attorneys came together as the, quote, Lawyers Committee for Better Housing. Each attorney adopted a problem building and worked with the tenants to force landlords and the courts to improve living conditions in their properties. We also partnered with neighborhood groups like the Rogers Park Tenants Council and the Metropolitan Tenants Organization uh, to battle the corruption and the inefficiencies of housing court. In one significant victory, we mobilized grassroots support to write and pass the Chicago Residential Landlord and Tenant Ordinance, called the Tenants' Bill of Rights. The ordinance gave tenants new tools to use against landlords who weren't maintaining their properties. And it probably, frankly, wouldn't have passed without Harold Washington. Today, LCBH is a citywide organization. It still partners with pro bono attorneys and law firms to reach more tenants. In 2019, volunteer attorneys and supportive services interns donated nearly 9,000 hours of service, helping 165 households to stabilize their housing. LCBH also continues to work alongside community-based organizations to reform eviction court. One such partner, and the winner of this year's Outstanding Pro Bono Service Award, has deep ties to Rogers Park. Loyola University Center for Urban Research and Learning, or CURL, a collaboration between LCBH and the CURL employs research and data collection methods under the same mission we established four years ago to hold our judicial system accountable and advocate for fair housing for all Chicago residents. A little background on this partnership. Three years ago, LCBH's Special Projects Coordinator, Randall Erkren, reached out to CURL to see if they might be interested in assisting with LCBH's Chicago Evictions data portal. The partnership aimed to better understand the challenges of eviction law in Cook County and the social and legal variables that influence the outcomes for eviction cases. LCBH released the data portal at a community event in May 2019. Among LCBH and CURL's major findings was that between 2010 and 2017, Chicago saw an average of 23,000 eviction cases for, per year. In those cases, attorneys represented landlords 79% of the time, but attorneys represented tenants in only 11% of those same cases. The consequences of that imbalance are staggering. In 62% of cases where tenants lacked an attorney, the case ended with an eviction order. But eviction cases ended with an eviction order in just 50% of the cases when tenants had a private attorney. Eviction cases were even more likely to end favorably for tenants who had legal aid attorneys represent, representing them as only 22% of those cases ended in eviction orders. The LCBH and CURL partnership has driven policy initiatives in Chicago, such as LCBH's CIRA program. And even in other cities, last year, the Legal Society of Cleveland led a successful campaign that resulted in the adoption of a right to counsel in eviction court for low-income families with children. The Legal Aid Society of Cleveland cited LCBH data to make the case for more public and United Way funding for civil legal aid organizations to represent clients under the new program. I hope that LCBH's data will soon be used to inform the creation of a right to counsel in Chicago. In closing, I'm very excited to see that 40 years later, LCBH has gone from working in Rogers Park to advocating for the whole city and being a resource for cities across the country. While we can't be here together tonight, I hope to see everyone in person next year for the celebrated of these impactful past four decades. Peter Rosenbratt will accept this year's Outstanding Pro Bono Service Award on behalf of CURL. Dr. Rosenblatt had been conducting research on how income housing, racial inequality, and urban redevelopment prior to CURL's partnership with LCBH. Peter, thank you for your vision and using data to shine light on darkness and raise awareness about Chicago's eviction crisis. Your work truly represents the spirit of generosity and dedication to justice that inspired the volunteers who founded LCBH 40 years ago. On behalf of LCBH, I am proud to present the 2020 Outstanding Pro Bono Service Award to Dr. Peter Rosenblatt and Loyola Curl. Thank you, David, for your kind words.
I'm humbled to accept this award on behalf of the Center for Urban Research and Learning, or CURL, at Loyola University Chicago. Uh, I'm an urban sociologist and professor at Loyola, and I've actually spent a fair amount of my career working with lawyers, often in the housing advocacy realm. And so, it, and so far, it's been far less lucrative than it might sound. I suppose it's appropriate that I'm here to accept a pro bono service award. Actually, I deeply appreciate the work that I've been able to do with CURL and LCBH. Often, academics struggle to have our voices heard outside of the academy. Our first instinct is to turn to journalists or the popular press to amplify our voices. CURL's approach, by contrast, emphasizes the importance of listening. In particular, listening to those who are closest to the social problems we care about and to those who know how to fight for change. CURL's work with LCBH has been especially illustrative of this point. Our work to understand the eviction crisis in Chicago has led us to explore the influence of racial segregation, landlord practices, and most recently, the relationship between unemployment and eviction that has become so salient in the midst of the COVID-19 related economic shutdown. As unemployment in Chicago spiked in the spring and the governor started passing a series of moratoriums on evictions, housing advocates all across the country began asking what's going to happen when the courts start hearing eviction cases again. How many people who have lost jobs will end up facing eviction? And what can we do to prepare for this? In response to all of this, CURL and LCBH put together a statistical model looking at the relationship between unemployment and eviction filings. We were able to generate predictions based on uh, uh, predictions of the number of eviction filings that there might be once the moratoriums end. This number continues to get higher and higher as we extend the date for when evictions can be filed and as the Chicago unemployment rate remains in the double digits. To be clear, eviction morator the eviction moratorium is needed so that we don't put people on the street in the middle of a pandemic. But we also need to avoid just kicking the can down the road in by including some form of rent assistance or by reinstating the supplementary unemployment insurance that was available in the first few months after the pandemic. Without these additional protections, renters, as well as landlords, are left vulnerable and it will be harder for us to recover from the pandemic. The partnership between CURL and LCBH has deepened the knowledge base behind this work and amplified both sets of voices. And in order to confront, and this has helped us confront the need for greater housing security and fairness. I'm especially thankful to Randall, Mark, and Jude for their insight and willingness to explain details of the legal system, often multiple times. I'm also thankful to my colleagues at CURL and to my wife and two kids for their support over this busy and hectic last couple of months. CURL and I are honored to be recognized, and we know that we'll need to do more of this work in the coming days. We're excited to see what the next steps might be in this journey. Thank you, David, and congratulations again, Peter. The Barbara Grau Outstanding Housing Advocate Award is presented annually by LCBH in honor of Barbara Grau, LCBH's first staff attorney. Jack Kaplan, LCBH's founding executive director, will present the award. Jack was executive director from 1980 to 1990. Jack recently retired from the United Way of Metropolitan Chicago, where he was the director of policy and advocacy. Jack has remained a true friend to LCBH, most recently helping us reconnect with LCBH's founders and other alumni. Jack, thank you for assisting us, our, our staff and current board members, and reconnecting with our founders. I look forward to celebrating with you and everyone at LCBH for 2020. I had the distinct pleasure of working with Barbara Grau when I hired her as LCBH's first staff attorney in 1980. She called LCBH's legal director position her dream job, but really, she was the dream candidate. Barbara was instrumental in helping to develop LCBH's receivership program. Through this initiative, LCBH People's Housing and the Housing Resource Center would breathe new life into troubled buildings by appointing a receiver to accept rent payments and make repairs when an owner was either unwilling or temporarily unable to do so. In one memorable case, Barbara filed a motion preventing water and electric service from being discontinued in a 42-unit multifamily building in Rogers Park. A receiver appointed 
and the crisis was averted. Barbara was a tireless advocate for tenants that she represented. She believed that everyone deserved equal access to safe, decent, and an affordable place to live. This core value continues to guide LCBH's work today. The same vision for justice and equity inspires the work of Lynette Barnes, the winner of this year's Barbara Grau Outstanding Housing Advocate Award. Lynette is the Emergency Fund Senior Program Manager for All Chicago Making Homelessness History. In 2019, the Emergency Fund served 3,611 households, including more than 2,247 children, providing over $3.9 million in assistance. The Emergency Fund provides quick financial assistance to persons experiencing a crisis or at risk of becoming homeless. Examples include making payments on a person's behalf for rent, utilities, or transportation. Lynette is a lifelong resident of Chicago. She drove a CTA bus to help pay for college, and to this day, she still holds a commercial driver's license which I think speaks volumes about her many talents. Lynette has spent most of her professional career in the human services field. She has managed youth development and job training programs at the Chicago Mayor's Office for Workforce Development and for 22 years at the Chicago Urban League. While at the Urban League, Lynette would contact the Emergency Fund's program manager on behalf of her clients who needed help with transportation and other expenses. Through these experiences, Lynette says she saw firsthand how even a small amount of financial assistance could help prevent a catastrophe for a family in need or a college student struggling to make ends meet. Lynette joined All Chicago in 2007. In 2019, her team partnered with 60 different community organizations whose clients needed help with a short-term crisis. Lynette recalls meeting LCBH's Executive Director, Mark Swartz, and Supportive Services Director, Jude Gonzalez, at Chicago Continuum of Care meetings. Over time, a strong collaboration emerged, leading to a pilot court-based emergency rental assistance program known as CIRA, the first municipal district court provided office space in the Daly Center near the eviction courtrooms. An LCBH social worker screens renters for eligibility to receive up to $5,000 in emergency rental assistance to pay back rent or move to other permanent housing. An LCBH attorney negotiates with landlord's attorneys to accept the funds and seal the eviction records. Earlier this year, LCBH became an All Chicago Emergency Fund Partner Agency. This means that LCBH can now quickly screen tenants in eviction court for eligibility to receive up to $5,000 in emergency financial assistance to pay back rent or move to other permanent housing. Before the pilot program was launched, Renters in eviction court were not screened for eligibility to receive emergency rental assistance. Today, the CIRA program is a very timely one as LCBH anticipates a surge in eviction filings when the current moratoria end. Thanks for your vision and seeing how eviction prevention is homeless prevention. You are providing an essential service to LCBH clients and all Chicago's other community partners. You truly represent the spirit and dedication of the woman for whom this award is named. On behalf of LCBH, I am proud to present the 2020 Barbara Grau Outstanding Housing Advocate Award to Lynette Barnes. Thank you, Jack, and everyone at LCBH for this award. I am truly honored. When Mark Swartz called to tell me that I had been selected to receive the Barbara Grau Outstanding Housing Advocate Award, I was in shock. I was honored to be chosen, and then I realized that I didn't know about Barbara. 
When I read through the information Mark provided on her many accomplishments, the things that stood out over and over was her how-to mentality while helping to develop the Tenants Bill of Rights and her caring too much to lose determination when representing domestic violence survivors. I have been given an easier path to help individuals and families to maintain affordable housing, fight unjust evictions, prevent homelessness, and protect housing rights because of Barbara Groff. And I am forever grateful for her many contributions to LCBH and her clients. I can accept this award because I am part of a strong group of people, organizations, and leaders who support and believe that ending homelessness, stopping evictions, and providing affordable housing is an achievable possibility. I have the support of Mark and Jude at LCBH, who, like Barbara Graw, have that how-to drive. They never asked if we can do this or at that, but always come to the conversation with how we can make things happen, and I know that I can call on them day or night. I also pull for them and rely on the staff, vision, and leadership at All Chicago. When what everyone thought was a short-term flu-like virus rocked Chicago and fully turned into a full-blown pandemic, Carolyn Ross, All Chicago CEO, said, go home, stay safe. We have the financial resources, technology, and support of the Chicago Continuum of Care and the City of Chicago to continue assisting households facing homelessness. We also have the resilient, resourceful partners and we still have work to do, so let's show up and show out. I use these words to motivate me every day, and I'm proud to be one small piece of a unique puzzle inspired by Barbara Graw, and I'm so grateful for this award. Many thanks. Thank you, Jack, and congratulations again, Lynette. Now I'd like to introduce you to April Akinge, our newest staff member. She is CIRA's intake coordinator and LCBH values her advocacy and voice. Now here's a chance to learn a little bit more about April and the work she does for LCBH and in the community. My name is April Ikenga. I got connected to Lawyers Committee for Better Housing uh, when I was going through an illegal eviction uh, with my property managers. So I was able to reach out to them and receive assistance. It was awful especially seeing as how it was an illegal eviction. A very gut-wrenching experience. It's filled with anxiety, and it just seems unfair that you're being victimized in a, in a transaction where you're in, a, in an apartment which is not a commodity but a necessity. After LCBH fought for me, fought for my rights as a tenant, had my eviction sealed, they went on to recognize that they needed someone in the organization that had been impacted by an eviction. Uh, someone who could see it from the other side um, and actually be able to assist the clients on a different level and attend to what they need as someone who's been through that. So they hired me on as the CIRA intake coordinator. CIRA, C-E-R-A, is Court Emergency Based Rental Assistance. It allows a tenant to either stay in the unit and it also even assists with moving. CIRA basically pairs the tenant up with legal services. Uh, legal services goes out and fights to make sure that the landlord accepts the funds that are being issued and CIRA, we submit the application to make sure that those funds are procured. We are looking at mass ev evictions and eviction filings at a mass level once the moratorium expires. Um, because we're dealing with COVID-19, this will give us the opportunity to keep the property owners out of court and keep the tenants housed at the same time. Well, I believe that people should donate to Lawyers Committee for Better Housing because this is something that has proven to be effective. The most vulnerable people out here, which are renters and low-income families, um, it also keeps us in our communities, those of us who wish to stay. And also it helps the landlord because they have mortgages and things that need to be due. So the serial program, it pays them. So you would save thousands of households that need the help. We have the opportunity to take away some stress and anxiety in people who are already suffering from trauma. Thank you, April. We're so grateful to have you working with LCBH. 
Now, before we introduce our Sharon L. King Distinguished Alumni Award winner, I'd like to introduce you to Mae Whiteside, a current board member, and Pat Bronte, who's worn many hats at LCBH. Mae is a member of our board. Her story exemplifies why we do the work that we do. I hope that after you hear Mae's story, uh, if you're a former volunteer client, you'll want to reconnect with LCBH. May thank you for your service as a board member. After May, you'll hear from Pat Bronte, who's worn many hats at LCBH. Pat, I'm thrilled you've decided to get re-involved with LCBH and look forward to celebrating with you in 2021. My name is Mae Whiteside. I am a civil engineer, graduate from Illinois Tech. I am very proud of building our nation's infrastructure. I am a proud owner of a civil engineering firm called CKL Engineers, which is a solution-oriented think tank of engineers and construction managers providing local road and highway construction engineering and management. I decided to connect with LCBH due to past experiences growing up. My mom was a frequent, I'd say, guest at the Daily Center. Uh, we were always being evicted, no matter how long of the stay, how, how short of the stay. We were always found to be in need of legal support in eviction court. And I noticed right away, I was a very sharp child. I read a lot. I was into science and math. I remember we were in line at the currency exchange. My mom monthly cashed her welfare check and picked up her food stamps. I remember our first eviction at the age of 10. My mom wrote letters to Chicago Housing Authority. She wrote letters to Mayor Jane Byrne at the time and said, you know, I, I can't afford my rent. Is there any way I can get help? The experience at 10 years old, it just doesn't leave you simply because it produced so many homeless shelter visits and overnight stays and just being in transit from shelter to shelter. There were 30, 60, 90 day stays. And so I had said when I got older, I would reach back to an organization such as LCBH and say, I am one of the children that you help protect when you go to court for these families. It is important that an organization like LCBH have the resources that they need to provide the attorneys. COVID-19 is a scary thing. It has really impacted the services, the level of support we were able to provide renters. Coming out of COVID-19, I, I would love to see how we can help service these residents in these places. LCBH has provided and protected residents for 40 years. Come home and support the organization that's helped others stay in theirs. I guess I'm a manifestation of what you were trying to do is create a stable environment for families and for children to stay in their homes. Look, if I can do this, you can too. Check out what we're doing now and find out that there's many more like me that remember the work of LCBH. Good evening, my name is Pat Bronte. Tonight I'm pleased to present LCBH's 2020 Sharon L. King Distinguished Alumni Award. The award recognizes outstanding professional achievement by a former legal fellow or intern of LCBH. I actually joined LCBH as an intern myself after my first year at law school at Northwestern in 1985. And I served as a member of the Board of Directors from 1989 to 99, including a three-year stint as board president. And I joined the LCBH staff briefly in 2000. LCBH's mission resonated with me from the start and has remained in my heart ever since. In fact, after many years working outside of LCBH, I decided to return in 2019 as a volunteer to help plan LCBH's 40th anniversary. And the reason I did that is because I've always been amazed by this agency's ability to leverage limited resources to make a huge impact on people's lives. During my final year as board president, Sharon King joined LCBH as a volunteer in the Attorney of the Day program. She worked the third Thursday with Matthew Cash covering eviction cases. Sharon went on to become LCBH's treasurer in 1999, 
board vice president in 2000 and later served two terms as board president. Sharon made many significant contributions to the agency. Notably, she secured an endowment in 2008 that allowed LCBH to create the Edwin J. Brock and Hazel and Bertram Brody Fellowship. The endowment provides a stipend for a legal intern or fellow to hone their skills as civil legal attorneys. Sharon provided a steady hand in leading the agency through some turbulent times, and she generously hosted our board meetings at the beautiful Sidley Austin Conference Rooms, lending a touch of class to our then ragtag group. We truly thank Sharon for her long service and the extraordinary contributions she has made to sustain the future of LCBH. She exemplifies the leadership, the continuous dedication, and the passion for our mission that enabled LCBH to become the powerful advocate for Chicago tenants that it is today. Tonight, I am pleased to present the Sharon L. King Distinguished Alumni Award to an individual who has demonstrated exceptional professionalism and dedication to protecting renters' rights and advancing racial justice. Charlene Grace arrived at LCBH in the summer of 2012 as a Pilly summer intern. She worked at the Daily Center supporting tenants facing evictions from private landlords. Charlene chose LCBH because she was interested in housing justice and had already been involved in anti-eviction and anti-foreclosure work and community organizing before joining the agency. After graduating from Northeastern University School of Law in 2013, Charlene went on to work as the Senior Criminal Justice Policy Analyst at Chicago Appleseed. She managed a school-based restorative justice program in back of the yards, and she also coordinated the Juvenile Expungement Help Desk at the Cook County Juvenile Center. In 2015, Charlene became a founding member of the Chicago Com Community Bond Fund and currently serves as the fund's executive director. The Chicago Community Bond Fund has two programs. The first is a revolving bond fund to free hundreds of people from Cook County Jail who would otherwise be incarcerated before trial, simply because they lacked the money to purchase their freedom. In just the past few weeks, the Chicago Community Bond Fund has paid bonds to free 65 people arrested in Illinois while supporting the Black Lives Matter movement or protesting police violence against black people. The second program is a policy and advocacy program working for systemic reform of the criminal justice system, along with the Coalition to End Money Bonds. Last year, the Chicago Community Bond Fund helped launch the Illinois Network for Pretrial Justice. And that's a coalition of more than 30 organizations dedicated to eliminating money bonds and reducing pretrial jailing. Charlene, thank you for your support of grassroots social movements before, during, and after your time at LCBH. Your passion for racial justice and your efforts to reform the criminal legal system have been remarkably effective, and we cannot wait to see what you will achieve in the years to come. On behalf of LCBH, I am proud to present the 2020 Sharon L. King Distinguished Alumni Award to Charlene Grace. Thank you, Pat for that introduction. And thank you, Sharon, for the example that you've provided to me and so many others of a life of service and meaningful contributions. I'm so happy and humbled to be honored today for the summer that I spent with Lawyers Committee for Better Housing as a Pilly intern. When I went to law school, it was with the goal of using those skills and the credentials and knowledge in service of social movements to create fundamental social change. And when I was looking for organizations where I could learn those skills and practice doing that, I was looking for organizations that were helping people immediately in the here and now, and were also contributing to policy change and working to put themselves out of existence. And that's how I came to find Lawyers Committee for Better Housing and the Lawyer of the Day program providing representation directly to tenants facing eviction and foreclosure, while also supporting tenants organizing in their buildings and building power 
so that they would be in a better position to prevent evictions and to win stable housing and protections for themselves and their neighbors. And I'm so glad to be here today celebrating LCBH and all the incredible work that everyone connected to the organization does, and also to be recognized for the work that Chicago Community Bond Fund does because these issues are so intertwined, the issues of housing and criminalization. So we know that organizations, we know that people who are facing housing instability are more likely to enter into the criminal legal system. And we know that when people are jailed while awaiting trial, they're much more likely to become homeless or to experience housing instability in the future. So these are deeply intertwined issues. And LCBH and partners have been part of leading that conversation in the county and making changes that are keeping people in their homes and allowing people who have some kind of criminal record to access safe and affordable housing and to stay in their homes. And I just want to emphasize again how interconnected these things are and why it's so important that we continue to talk about them together because the number one need that people we have bonded out at Chicago Community Bond, for, Bond Fund tell us about is the need for housing and particularly affordable housing and housing that people can access free of discrimination against them for their past record of court involvement. So thank you so much for this honor. I'm humbled and thank you so much for the work that all of you are doing and that's enabled by everyone who is here tonight supporting LCBH. Stay tuned for a special message from a special person. Thank you, Mark. First of all, I would like to congratulate Sharon on being the recipient of the 2020 Sharon L. King Distinguished Alumni Award. I am most impressed with all you have accomplished and so pleased you have been chosen and recognized. Your great work is in addressing issues that impact discrimination and social justice is very important. And we are proud that you are an alum of LCBH. My legal career began when I graduated from college and became fully aware of the lack of opportunity available for women in the workplace. Mount Holyoke College, a women's college in Massachusetts, from which I graduated, reconfirmed my understanding from childhood that women could and should make their own opportunities. So I enrolled in law school, even though at that time, the legal profession was not particularly welcoming to women. At Valparaiso University School of Law, I was the only woman student in the entire law school and the faculty was all male. Fortunately, unlike for many other women in law school at that time, I had a, an, a, a supportive law school experience. I graduated first of my class, but then I was faced with getting a job when law firms generally were not hiring women lawyers. Good fortune arose. I was accepted on the Attorney General's Honor Program at the United States Department of Justice in Washington, D.C., where I had the opportunity to brief and argue tax cases in United States Courts of Appeal around the country for about four and a half years. During that time, I also received an LLM in taxation from Georgetown University Law School. When it came time to consider again the possibility of private practice, Paul Dean, who was then Dean of the Georgetown Law School, volunteered to introduce me to law firms in Chicago. Uh, where 
I thought I would have the best chance of getting a job. I was hired by the historic law firm of Isham, Lincoln and Beale as an associate and later became a partner of that firm. At Isham, Lincoln and Beale, I represented electric utility companies and argued and briefed cases I, around the country. It included arguing and briefing a case in the United States Supreme Court that resulted in a reversal of a unanimous opinion by the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. I later became a partner in the Chicago law firm of Sidley Austin LLP. Throughout my years in private practice, I was involved in both bar association and pro bono activities. My first involvement with LCBH was in about 1997, when I signed up for the Attorney of the Day program, which I found very intriguing. The Attorney of the Day program helped me to understand the challenges tenants faced without representation in legal representation in eviction court. That was the beginning of a long involvement with LCBH. I served on the board for many years, uh, starting out as treasurer, later vice president, and then I served as president. During this time, uh, I had the pleasure of working with many outstanding people, uh, both staff, and volunteers, and I saw LCBH go into the outstanding organization it is today. I'm pleased to have been honored by LCBH as recipient of the Founders Award in 2006 and the Legacy Award, now the Sharon L. King Legacy Award in 2012. The latter award is given from time to time to honor a contribution to LCBH that has been so substantial as to create a legacy for the organization. I was instrumental in establishing the Brock Brody Endowment. It funds a fellowship that allows LCBH to hire each year a recent law school graduate for a one-year position. The establishment of this endowment was important to me because it allowed LCBH to continue to attract young lawyers to its mission and to encourage them to help continue the work of the organization. This year, the endowment enabled LCBH to host two equal justice interns, Caitlin Cutshaw, and Carl Sessions, both of whom are doing amazing work. Endowments are very important to an organization to ensure that it can continue to carry out its mission. And I urge you uh, all to consider finding ways to help fund additional endowments for LCBH. My advice to young attorneys who are just starting their careers is to consider the words of American author and poet, Maya Angelou, who said, you can only become truly accomplished at something you love. Don't make good money your goal. Instead, pursue the things you love doing and then do them so well, people can't take their eyes off of you. I would also add that a law degree offers many opportunities, not only to represent clients, but also to help others less fortunate through pro bono activities. And I think I would also add that LCBH is a good example of a not-for-profit organization where lawyers can make a significant difference. Thank you for participating in this virtual awards ceremony. 
and for joining me in recognizing through the Sharon L. King Distinguished Alumni Award, the important roles that young attorneys and all volunteers play in carrying out the mission of LCBH. Thank you. Please join me in giving tonight's award winners a virtual round of applause. It's great to see so many people join us virtually tonight. At Lawyers Committee for Better Housing, we work to ensure that people in eviction court have equal access to justice. The cases that we handle relate to real properties and real families across Chicago. The need for our services is substantial and has seen an increase during these unprecedented times. At this time, I want to direct everyone's attention to the bottom of the screen on tonight's presentation. I have the honor of asking everyone to consider making a donation to support LCBH's work. You can snap a picture of the QR code, which will take you to LCBH's online giving form, or you can text to give using the number and message provided below. If you've read Matthew Desmond's book, Evicted, then you know that there are many consequences to eviction beyond having to move. For most renters, being evicted can lead to job loss, difficulty finding affordable housing in replacement, and even worse for kids, it can contribute to school performance problems. One of the most impressive measures of LCBH's model is that more than 80% of LCBH clients who receive both our legal services and our supportive services remain stably housed for six months or longer. Consider the ripple effect that stability has on their lives. It leads to job stability, economic stability, and a sense of place for adults and kids who get to remain in their communities and schools. I volunteer and I also donate to LCBH because when I do, I know that I'm helping to write this story. So I invite you to join me in helping more families facing eviction to move from a path leading to homelessness to one of housing stability. Back to you, Mark. Thank you, Sharon, and congratulations again, Charlene. I'd also like to thank LCBH's terrific staff. We couldn't do any of this without you. Although we'd planned to meet in person this fall, this virtual space has been a great way for us to reconnect with our award winners tonight. If there's one message that I hope that everyone takes home, it's that we can't do this without your support. I sincerely hope by this time next year, we'll be able to celebrate LCBH's 40th anniversary in person. Please watch your mailbox for an invitation to Buddy Guys Legends for LCBH's 40th in 2021. Go to lcbh.org and make a contribution. Like us on Facebook and watch our Tenant Thursdays to learn more about LCBH's work. Stay safe and thank you for making tonight a memorable event.